pressure. So where's the blood pressure at? 180 over 115, right? And what's the magic number supposed to be? 120 over 80. So he's, he's more than normal, so he's hypertensive. Right? Even when they got him fixed, he's not quite good. So he has high blood pressure. He's, not, he's above 120 over 80, and there's different levels above that. So we've got to figure out these terms and what they have to do with his blood pressure. So we're going to go through and figure out what these terms have to do with everything by putting it on the board. So let's figure out these three things in question two. <coughs> Let's start with the middle one. Elevated TPR from the case. What does TPR stand for? Total peripheral resistance. Total peripheral. It's resistance to blood flow. So total peripheral resistance is resisting blood flow. It's what makes his blood not want to flow. So over here, you're supposed to know all the reasons, things that affect TPR, the peripheral blood flow. There are going to be three of them we're going to talk about. Just going to list them here. One of them is called the vessel diameter. Which vessel do you think we're talking about, arteries or veins? Primarily the arteries. Remember, veins don't have pressure. They're not the arteries. What size are your arteries? Okay. The next one is called blood viscosity. Someone tell me in English what viscosity measures. Thickness. Thickness. This is actually the RBC count of your blood. The RBCs are controlling the thickness of the blood, which we'll talk about in a minute. Third choice, vessel length. Okay, what the heck is vessel length? Tall or short, kind of thing? Yeah, how many blood vessels you have. Because the more you have, the more resistance there is. This is actually body fat calculation. So you have the size of your arteries, the count of your blood, how much body fat you have. To prove that I'm not making this up, we're going to do an animation that shows TPRs and how they affect Mr. Helm. I'm oh, not Mr. Helm, this guy. Let me show you oh, this one here. So here's a blood vessel, it's an artery. And I'm right now it's running at 120 as pressure. I can change its size, I can change its diameter by clicking this vasomotor nerve. I'm gonna make it get smaller. What do you think is gonna to happen to the pressure I make the pipes smaller with the same amount of blood in them. Yeah. It should go up, right? The same as the heart. When I squeeze, pressure should climb. Let's see if that's true. Was anyone watching the blood pressure gauge? Yes. No, you're just looking over here. Look over there too, all right? Smaller, went up to 140. Bigger, went down to 120. All right? So, now peripheral resistance, my arteries, if they get smaller, what should my resistance do? What will my pressure do? It should go up. And if they get bigger or dilate, what should they do? I should decrease the blood pressure, decrease the resistance. So smaller my pipes, the more force it takes to go through them. So I increase resistance. By making them smaller, I decrease resistance when I make them bigger. All right? So if you take vasoconstrictors, your blood vessels get smaller, pressure should climb, right? All right. Let's see if that's true. Here's epinephrine. Sympathetic nervous system. What does sympathetic nervous system do to your blood pressure? Increases. Let's see how that works. Boom. Small. Up. Because that's how it works. So I'm going to make my blood vessels constrict. And that's going to force my pressure to climb because I'm vasoconstricting them. I'm making the pipe smaller with the same amount of fluid inside. Make sense? Okay, that's one factor of resistance. Next factor of resistance is the viscosity. Which I'm going to do right actually here. So right now I have my hematocrit. My red blood cells are floating in that C there. 
I'm going to increase the viscosity. I'm going to make more cells. What should happen to my pressure if I put more cells in the soup? It's going to increase, right? I'm making chowder. It's getting thicker. So as I increase the RBC count, I'm going to increase the solids in the blood, thereby raising the pressure accordingly. If I take away your RBCs, what should happen to my pressure? Decrease viscosity, decreases pressure. There's less solids in the blood. Right? So more RBCs makes my pressure go up. Fewer RBCs makes my pressure go down. That pen doesn't work. So more RBCs makes my pressure climb. Fewer RBCs. My pressure goes down because I'm making it thicker or not thicker. Okay, thinner. Make sense? So I have the size of the tubes, the amount of cells in the, the plasma. Let's do one more. Vessel length. I said it was body fat, right? Let's do that. So here's your body, here's some skin. I'm going to make you fatter. So go back to pathology 231. Fat's vascular, right? So I, if I add more fat, I need more blood vessels, which makes the trail longer, which means it's going to take more force to get there. So my pressure is going to climb. So now I have to send blood harder through all these extra tubes. There's more resistance. If I take the fat away, my pressure should go down. Fat up, no fat down, right? So our last little list here, body fat. So if I increase fat, what happens to my blood pressure? It goes up. If I decrease my fat, my pressure goes down. Does that make sense? Those are the three most common ways of affecting resistance. Right. So let's go back to our case study real fast and see if we can identify those with this guy. So here we go. So you see anything up there that says he might? 210. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Five, six, 210. So we can guess that maybe he's got a vessel length problem, right? I mean, <coughs> we're assuming that, right? That fat could be going up, right? What else might be happening? Let's assume anything else he might be doing. <coughs> right? He could be taking some kind of vasoconstrictor. Let's say he's a smoker, right? Smoker would increase your RBCs, but he's doing things that are going to increase his resistance. Harder for blood to go through his body, right? Hence, he's going to have a higher blood pressure. Make sense? Okay. So let me add one more piece to this puzzle here. Okay. Normal person on the left, my triple bopper with cheese right there on the right. What happened to my blood pressure in the person on the right? Went up. Why'd it go up? It's just a triple whopper of cheese. What's wrong with it? Okay, so if you look at what happened, if I get plaque buildup on my artery wall, the artery's getting smaller, right? What happens when I make my tube smaller? Let's see, constriction, blood pressure begins to climb, right? And let's say, you know, I'm not eating well, I could be gaining body fat, which also makes it climb. So if you're not checking your blood pressure, you can have things building up in your arteries and you wouldn't know it because the way you tell that is your blood pressure climbs because the pipes are getting smaller because your cheeseburger's right there. Yes? Is that also showing that it, does it like eddy after the... Yeah, you get a turbulence afterwards. Mm -hmm. Right, because it makes an obstruction, so it, not only do you get the higher pressure, but you get bad, what they call it, kind of a turbulence in the system. Would it cause it to bulge more at that? Yeah, and then you can get some kind of aneurysm over on this side because of the pressure. So the idea is if you, if you get more resistance, you're going to see your pressure climb because it's harder for the blood to get through all that stuff. Right? Let me show you a real life, kind of real life picture. Right? So here's an artery for someone. And then here's an artery. What do you notice different about the one on the right than the left? Hmm. Seems clogged. Well, it's a little bit bigger, yes. But look at all this. Look at this stuff. That doesn't seem like it should be there, is it? It's called occlusion, right? I'm filling up my arteries with crud. Plaque, cholesterol, trans fat, 
whatever. So now I'm building up stuff within my vessel walls, therefore my vessel is getting smaller. So let's look at this person. Oh Tell me where the blood is. <laughs> We're here. If that was going to some body part that was important, you're not getting much blood. And what would your pressure have to do to get it through that hole? You have to go sky high, right? So again, blood pressure tells the doctor a lot about what the piping's like, because pressure goes up if the pipes get small. The only reason they get small is bad stuff, right? normally. Right? So this person's on their way to die, because you're going to have a hard time getting blood to that organ, and the pressure's going to be sky high anyway. Right? So in our case study, this man has high blood pressure, which implies that he's starting to increase resistance. So his elevated TPR is because he's colluding his pipes and all that. So let's figure out these other two then. Can someone tell me what plasma renin is? That's my job. Let's make a list over here. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'll put it over here. So what we're going to learn now is a pen to the To understand renin, we have to learn how you're going to regulate your blood pressure. Okay, you're going to make a cross on your page, like this. We're going to make four compartments. Each compartment is going to have a different thing in it. Okay? So, this side of the board, we're going to do short-term regulation. So this side of my cross is going to be short-term blood pressure regulation. What do you think the other side is going to be? Long-term Long regulation. Okay, so we have short-term and long-term blood pressure regulation. Each box is going to be a different problem. So over here we have an increase of blood pressure. So if my blood pressure is going up, this one's going to be if it's going down. Short term. Can anyone guess what these two are going to be? Same. Same thing, but long term. So we're going to see what happens if I have high blood pressure or low, short term versus long term. Okay, and we're going to fill this out because it's on your test next week. So short term, what would I use to control blood pressure in the short term, meaning minutes? What could my body use to deal with blood pressure? Vesodilate. Pretty close. And how would I know to vesodilate? Nervous system. Nervous system. Very good. So the short term is going to be nerves dealing with my blood pressure. So let's think of two. I, I'm envisioning sympathetic and parasympathetic. So if my blood pressure is going up, what could I do to make it go down? Which system would I use to stop going up? Parasympathetic. Parasympathetic. So if I have high blood pressure, I'm going to increase parasympathetic. Because that's going to more rest than digest. And I'm going to decrease sympathetic. Because I want less fight and flight. Does that make sense? So if I'm getting too much blood pressure, I'm going to turn on rest and digest and turn off the fight and flight. So when you were running the class, let's hypothetically say that, your blood pressure went up. When you sat down after the test and you get all mad, eventually your body wants your blood pressure to go down, so you're going to turn on more resting and digesting, turn off the fight or flighting. So if it's too low, how can I make it go up? Take a guess. Increase sympathetic. And I'm going to decrease what? Parasympathetic. So if your blood pressure is getting too low right now, your body can turn on the fight or flight to ratchet it up and turn off the rest and digest. Short term, right now kind of factor. Okay? So I'm going to show you an animation of that process before we get back to our case study. So short term regulation of blood pressure. short-term regulation of rising blood pressure. So again, you, something happened, your blood pressure went up. 
you came to my class, you took a test, you're all freaked out. So my blood pressure's climbing. That's gonna make my arteries get a little too stretched. My brain doesn't particularly like that. All right? Let's try that. So my blood pressure is now 160. My brain says that's not really good. I want it to go back down. Right now. So my brain is gonna try then telling my circulatory system to lower the pressure. <coughs> Increase the parasympathetic, decrease the sympathetic, don't listen to my heart. I'm gonna die here, right? It's gonna slow down my heart rate, we should, we should sh shut down my output somewhat and lower my pressure. Okay? Make sense? So I'm gonna turn on more, fight, uh, more rest and digest. So then if that's true, Let's do the other way, which is my blood pressure is going down too much. I'm falling asleep. I'm going to faint, whatever. So my blood pressure goes down short term. I'm going to do the reverse. I'm going to turn on the sympathetic. So here's my lowering blood pressure. I'm going to die. So eventually my brain says, this is not good. And we should start ordering the heart to go faster. It's like an Edgar Allan Poe movie here. <laughs> so short term, that's how you're gonna modulate your blood pressure, just walking around, running the class, sitting down, your nervous system will learn to speed up, slow down. So now we're going to do the long-term boxes, which I'll zip up here. Let's fill out the long-term boxes first. So if short-term or nervous system, can anyone okay. guess what the long-term is going to be? <laughs> Endocrine. Endocrine. <laughs> Hormone. But endocrine system, we're going to use hormones. These are going to be hour, day, week, month, year kind of control. So nervous systems right now, hormones are broader. They're longer term. So to understand this box, we're going to go over here and make a list of some hormones that are going to affect your blood pressure. That thou shalt know thou shalt. So we're making a list of...